Hey, hello guys, this is Karthik from XVRAutomation.com and this is part 12 of our Android app automation with Robotium series. And in this part, we're going to create a very simple Android hybrid application in Android Eclipse. So before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 5 and part 6 since this part is going to be more similar to those two parts. Alright, so hybrid applications of Android. As we already discussed in part 2, hybrid applications are more like a web page but instead of page opening in a mobile web browser, the page will be rendered within a web view control of Android. So we already discussed about this a lot in part 2. So if you want, please go back to part 2 and see what I was discussing about. Alright, so let's start developing the hybrid Android application. For that, let's flip to Eclipse. Alright, so for creating the Android application, we first need to create the Android application project. So I'm going to click that. And here we are going to create our execute automation Android application. So let's give the name of the application as and execute automation app. And let's select the minimum required SDK to maybe API level 18 and the maximum is API level 19 because I don't have the API 22 in my machine and compile with uh, 19 as well. All right, so hit next and hit next and hit next again. We don't have to set any icons there and select the blank activity and let the activity name be main activity. So no problem with that. Or uh, let's give some custom activity name as well if you want to because this activity name is something which we'll use in our code as well so we'll call this as the EA activity all right so that's it and if I hit finish this will create a project for us all right so the Android application project is now created and the API level is going to be 19 so I'm going to select that so now you can see that our application is there and it has one hello world. So just delete that because we don't require them anymore. And we need to have a web view for this application. And, and that's what the application is going to fully have. Other than that, nothing is going to be there in this application. Right? So for that, you can go to the layouts. Maybe is it layouts? I'm not sure. Or where is that? I think it's composite. Yep, there is a web view, right? So in a composite, there is a web view. So you can directly put it here like this, and you can expand here to fit the whole application. All right, and the ID of the web view is web view one. Maybe we can change it if you want to. So let's give this as. Web view main and hit control S to save the activity. All right, and then all right, update the XML as well. And then we need to write the actual code behind for this particular application where it loads the execute automation website. All right, so for doing that. I'm not going to deal with all these code which is there which is automatically generated so I'm just going to delete all of them alright and then I'm going to write some code here on the on create method maybe let's leave this on create alone instead of deleting everything so that I can save some time alright so here in the on create which is the one which is created while the activity instantiates or while the activity loads. So I'm going to write the code right here. So as we already know that our application has the web view, right? So I'm going to write a class web view and let's call this as main view is equal to find view by there is a method called find view by ID and we will have all these errors suppress so control one 
All right, we're getting the error here. Maybe control one here. So let's import this. And now here, this method is not popping up. The reason is we need to import a package, which is nothing but Android dot app dot activity. All right, so if I import this class, maybe this method will start to work. And here for the ID, I need to pass the R dot ID dot the web view main. So this is my web view. All right, great. And it's asking us to cast it to web view. So I'm going to add in web view cast as well. All right, great. And then we need to create a settings for this web view. So there is something called web settings. So you'll understand why I'm creating a setting right now. So settings is nothing but for the view which I'm creating. So main view dot there is something called get settings method. So this will get your settings and then so there's namespace. Oops, sorry. There's a package may missing. So the C sharp and Java confusion always comes to me. Alright. And then for the settings, you need to set the JavaScript enabled is equal to true. We already discussed about this in our executeautomation.com website because if you don't set this JavaScript enabled is equal to true then you will have a lot of trouble because your page itself will not open or render since most of our website has JavaScript in it. And if we don't set this JavaScript enabled is equal to true, then surely it's going to throw us an error. All right, great. And then we need to set some more settings for our main view. So main view dot set Web view client of I'm going to write a custom method so my custom view all right and this class is not yet implemented so we need to create a class within this class maybe I can directly add a class right here Maybe we can make this as private and let's give the name as my custom view extends web view client. All right. And this web view client again we need to import. All right. And then within this. I'm going to write a method which will actually share which will actually say whether I need to override the URL or not. So override URL and then here I'm going to pass two parameters. One is web view and another one is URL. Right, so here I'm going to say the view dot there is a method called load URL, and this is the URL which I'm going to load, and then return if the page is loaded, then return as true. All right, super. So once this is done, I need to also set my scroll bars to be enabled if I want to. So I can set the scroll bars because my application is little longer so I'm going to set the scroll bar so set scroll bar style all right so here we're going to set the style as view of scroll bar maybe we can say scroll bar inside overlay yeah that should be great all right so once this is done the last but not least need to set 
the URL of our app. So this URL can be any URL. Right? So I'm gonna set one for my application here. So again main view dot load URL of http colon double slash execute automation dot com slash block. All right, super. That's it. See, you have written a super simple Android hybrid application in just few minutes. And now you have developed an application in Android, which just looks like an Android application, but it actually opens a web application within a web view. That's it. But still, it looks like an Android application for you. So I'm just going to run this and see if it works. So my Android is already launched. So I'm just waiting for the application to launch here. We'll see if this really works or not. All right, so it seems like the application is launched and we need to see, oops, ah, what is this? All right, seems like the web application within this web view is not getting the internet access. So for that, we need to set a value in our Android manifest.xml file to set or to enable the permission for internet access. So for that, I, I can either do from here, right? And then I can set the permissions or I can directly add a value in the manifest file as well. So the value is going to be users permission of Android colon name is equal to Android dot permission of is there anything like internet access or something? Android dot permission dot internet I can either write it as well. Yep, see here? There is a permission. So I'm just gonna add that and let's close this. Oops. All right, so now we have just written it. And let's go to this activity. I don't like this name. So maybe I can give a real good header name for my application. So for that, let's go to this activity EA. Or maybe you can go to the values strings.xml. And here for the app name, we can queue execute automation. All right, great. Because this is the, the string which is taken in your activity underscore ea.xml and then it is printing it in your application which you're developing. All right, so now if I run this application right now, maybe you should hopefully have the internet access. But in your emulator, your application will be slow and the internet access will also be slow even though your machine's internet is very fast. So don't worry about that. Your application, if you deploy in a real machine, the internet access will be still fast. All right, seems like the application is opened and it's loading the web page. And you can see that the Execute Automation website is loaded. Since the Execute Automation is mobile enabled, you can see that the mobile compatibility view is rendered here and uh, I could see the application is slowly rendering in our application. So right now, yep, it is uh, pretty slow. It's because the internet is slow and we'll wait for some time till the page is fully loaded. All right, so this proves that the application which we wrote right now is actually working. 
so every time if you open this application even in your Android with this particular application you can directly go to the Xero automation website from here right so this is more like a web applications or web URL shortcut all right so that's it guys this is how you can write a very simple Android hybrid application using your Eclipse and Android right so thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day